Okay, this is my next update video, monthly update video. So, if you see my last video with my surgery update, this is pretty much gonna be the same. So, um, okay, so the last month, what has happened with my transition? Because a lot of people like, like to know. Well, how? Well, there's the physical aspect of my body and then the non-physical stuff related to my transition. Let me talk about the non-physical stuff first. Um, kind of ties in. Well, the thing is, I did see the doctor, the surgeon, Dr. Goodwin. So I've been seeing, um, and that was my sixth, I think, yeah, six month follow up, surgery follow up. So yeah, um, and all the issues I was having, it was weird because um, I was having the itchy, stinging burning feel like that feeling like when you get up inside of you when you get kicked in the testicles and um bleeding like vaginal bleeding but when i seen him all those issues had resolved itself he was saying sometimes the body goes through things and it recognizes what's going on and it heals itself like fixes it and the part where I feel like being kicked in the testicles, even though I don't have any, he was saying that could be caused by that your body tries to grow back some of this spermicidal cord. Spermicidal cord, yeah. It tries to grow some of it back, spermicidal cord. Or if there's scar tissue around it and it gets overstretched, it can have that feeling. But he was saying if I continue to feel that or if it starts happening again, I need to contact the urologist and get it checked out and would possibly have to have surgery to correct it. But thankfully that hasn't um, happened. So, yeah. And he asked me if I wanted revision surgery, like if I was ready for revision or not. So it's up to me if I have it done or not. So at the time, I just told him I'm still thinking about it. And at this, so yeah. And I had gained weight when they weighed me. Uh, it was 130.2 pounds which I reached the goal of 130. So my goal, weight goal, is just whatever weight my body puts on from filling in my breasts on top, the top parts of my breasts. Once that's fully filled in, whatever weight that puts on my body, that's pretty much what I'm trying to gain. So I don't have issues with clothing fitting right. So that's my weight gain goal. It's just that much. What, whatever volume that would take up for this upper part of my breast to fill in. Whatever weight that puts on, that's how much weight I just want on my body and be done. But if I continue to gain and gain and yeah. So, I decided to fully go ahead and have a revision done, the revision, the revision surgery, which it's an outpatient procedure and I would be fully put out for it, so that's good, because I've been doing a lot of thinking about it the last six months or so, and The thoughts on my mind, 
I come to the conclusion that there's one aspect that I really want fixed more than the rest, but what needs to be fixed needs to be fixed, so all of it needs to be done. But one aspect I want more so done than the rest, it's my labia majora isn't filled in like it should be. Um, how I would want it, because it's like pretty much only when I'm like standing or my legs are like closed. Because Goodwin was saying when my legs are closed, everything looks good. But my labia majora wasn't fully filled in. So, um, whenever my legs are apart or in certain positions, it's like non-existent. But it's more noticeable if I'm standing. What little in the mod's pubis that's filled in that I'm happy with. And the lower part of the vulva surrounding the vaginal entrance that's filled in, but it's only noticeable if I'm standing or my legs are like closed. So the rest of it, that in between, is what I'm needing filled in. So that needs to be filled in. My labia majora, that's the outer labia. But the labia minora needs to be lifted back up. And that's what he's wanting to do the most. He wants to lift that back up so it looks like the labia, like it's supposed to. Which I know when the labia majora gets filled in, the labia minora is going to stick out more because how much labia minora they're able to give me, which is a good thing. Um, so, yeah. And. asymmetry if that doesn't get fixed for the left side they bring it back down because he said they could pull it down to make it symmetrical if that doesn't get corrected I'll be happy with it it's just lifting the labia minor up is what needs to be done and the labia major fully filled in which what my body does have, I've noticed, where the vaginal entrance is. I have a little bit of that camel toe kind of look in that area, but the upper part above the vaginal entrance towards the mons pubis, that in between, not really have that camel toe look in that spot, but the, yeah, even though that lower part does and the upper part doesn't, it just seem weird to not be all even because certain parts aren't filled in like it should be but it is what it is and that's just how my body is and I'm happy so far with the results just getting the rest of that fixed is going to be a blessing so yeah um and some of the weight I've been trying to gain it's so I can have that part of the revision done because I don't have a lot of fat down there and I need the fat to do the fat transfer from one part of the body to the vulva to fill it in because I don't have a lot of fat on my body so that's part of the reason why my labia majora is never really filled in or looks the way it needs to with the fullness and volume so that's Part of the reason I've been trying so hard to gain weight is so I have the fat to do that. And it's actually been a huge struggle for me ever since I started my transition. And beforehand, I've really struggled to gain weight. And every time I dropped weight, it really caused a lot of dysphoria for me, for my body. And in past videos, if you've seen those, you know how I felt. It was really hard on me whenever I'd lose weight. When hormones and whatnot happen, like hormones readjust or fluctuations and whatever 
have been in the past that caused that weight loss. But since surgery, it's still been a struggle because I've been struggling to still gain weight. It's been slowly been able to put it on. But when I got sick with COVID and lost that weight, it was hard to get that back on. It took a month and a half to start seeing it back on my body. And I'm so lucky I gained to where I've gained because I feel so much better. I'm so much happier. And my body just looks right and feels right with the weight on. And I'm not struggling anymore with that. I'm just hoping I don't become overweight is the thing. That's something that I'm conscious about. So, and right now not being on testosterone and my testosterone being low is actually helping as well. And when my estrogen is at, is perfect for my body, I've noticed. And the progesterone is really helping. And it's really helping with a lot of the physical stuff now. Um, I've noticed with the physical aspects, nothing's really changed with my facial hair. It's still coming in every day to every other day is how much and I shave. So what's left through the jawline through here the under part here and the upper part here of the chin and around through here the spots that has it. There's like one spot that's here and there's a hair here that really bugs me and the one around here that really bugs me because it's really hard to shave those three spots to get those hairs. So I'm going to have to soon start laser again because that's what my doctor recommended when I'm able to do the laser, which I'm able to now, then go to electrolysis afterwards. When everything is gone, it's gone. So, but the thing I'm not looking forward to when I do get all the lasers done, I can. And whatever's left that has to be electrolysis, you have to grow the hair out. And that's something I'm not looking forward to. So you have to have the hair long enough so we can tweeze it. So after you stick the needle in and zap it with electricity. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that part. But that's for future me. So right now I'm just not going to worry about that. And other physical changes I've noticed the last week or so my vaginal canal I can't say this happens to everyone but this is from my experience in my body having gender confirming surgery the last week or so it's become really sensitive when at my appointment with Goodwin for my follow-up when he was checking everything and when they check the vaginal canal, when he used his finger to make sure everything is good and there's no like granulation or any other weird things happening, it was extremely sensitive. Um, more than I thought it was. And it was kind of like, it needs to be done, but I don't really want to finger in there, but it has to be done so every, you know, everything's going good and healthy because the issues I was having. And now, the last few weeks or so, I've noticed when dilating, it's extremely sensitive. Some spots more than others, but the whole thing, I'm just like, this is really sensitive. And I never thought it would, like, having surgery, I never thought my vaginal canal would actually be this sensitive. Having it this sensitive is so worth it to me. And that's 
one concern. I don't want to lose sensitivity down there by having revision. Because before hormones, um, it really wasn't, and it really, like, especially sexually, didn't really have any feeling until I really got on the estrogen and then when I got on progesterone, it really fixed that issue and changed that. And over time, it's become more sensitive. And, sur and having surgery, it's even more sensitive than before surgery. And I don't want to lose that. That would cause a lot of dysphoria because the struggle it took to get what I have. So, um... That's something I don't want to lose. And the sensitivity, like, it's like sexually and non-sexually. It's like the times when it's like non-sexually, when I notice it, it's really deep inside my vaginal canal. And I just really get that feeling and sensation. And it gives me that gender, like, euphoria. Because all the signals and everything my body gave before surgery that it's supposed to look, feel, and function and when it wasn't structured that way it caused a lot of dysphoria but because it's structurally the way it feels and the signals are it just feels perfect and right and I just don't have that issue physically um, but when it comes down to it even like sexually now. Um, the thing is, I don't really want to go into detail sexually because that's like private and personal, but it felt right where that sensitivity level is, it just sexually just feels right. I just feel like my body was more connected with itself. I had that more mind-body connection of who I actually am and that it's right. And I came close to crying because how it felt and when it felt right. Um, so that's all I can really say about it. So yeah. Um and other things I can say is I've lost a little bit of like hair. Like well my older videos when I I mean, really old video. Towards the beginning of my transition when I said, I mentioned how my leg hair, how I went, would look at my legs and it looked like, kind of like a black head or something inside the pore that was black. Then you like squeeze it out. It was like a dead hair that falls out. Yeah. I found two of them that were like that the other day. So I'm still losing leg hair. I don't know how much more I'm gonna lose, if any, but I have to see. And um, I haven't really noticed much other changes physically, except the weight gain, how cute I look. <laughs> And the biggest of all, <laughs> they're still growing. <laughs> they're a lot bigger and fuller than where they've been in the past. It's weird with my body. I can't say how others' breasts grow, cisgender or trans. But the way mine grow every time I go up a cup size, which I've always struggled with this, trying
trying to find bras that fit right because of this one specific issue I have. Every time my breasts go up the cup size, the bottom part, like the bottom portion, of, like from here to about here, is extremely filled in. Then the tops up here end up shallow. I mean, to the point where it seems like they're two different cup sizes. The bo bottom's like my cup size I'm at, and the tops are a cup size smaller. So that's where I've realized I've had the issue because the bottom half, like the bottom portion of the bra, fits in my cup size. But the upper half still there's room in the bra cups where it still needs to fill in. And that's where always been my issue with bras trying to get ones that fit right whenever I go up a cup size. Because having to wait until the rest of it fills in is really frustrating. It doesn't really cause dysphoria, but it just cause more frustration than anything and if I get too frustrated with it I just feel like crying sometimes but it's getting there and yeah it feels so much better being a 32G like my bra size like you know band and cup size 32G which that's a size that's extremely hard to find in stores. American sizing, I should say. Because it's different volume in the cups in other countries. That's the same size. Number and lettering. So it's American size 32G. Um, so the last... Like the first two new bras I got, I had to get the sister sizing because they didn't have my cup size and my band size. So, yeah. But the last three sets I got, the bra and panty sets, I ordered should be here tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> that are my band and cup size. So I'll have to see how those fit and go from there. Um, so I'm just dealing with that fun times, which it kind of sucks because they've been hurting on and off and occasionally itching in spots. But it's mostly been hurting from growing on and off. So, yeah. I'm just hoping the tops of them fill in quickly and be done. I've decided I don't want to be smaller than a full 32G. Full enough to where it fills up the cups. I'll be happy there. Where the bra cups fully fit. Which, it's the demi- balconette styles that fit me the best because of this issue even though when I had the sizing done every place I went to they're trying to size me in something I know that wouldn't fit um they're trying to say I'm a 34 band size when yeah I'm not I'm a 32 but the last two bras I got the 34 seems to be fitting Snug enough, not having issues, so. But, yeah. So, they're trying to say I'm either two to about three cup sizes smaller than I am. I'm like, I'm not 34 double D. I'm not a 34 D. Because sister sizing would be a 34 triple D. And in my size, it's a 32 G. So I'm like, why are they trying to put me in the smaller cup than what I am? And that was what was frustrating. 
because I know how my breasts fit in bras and it's just frustrating when they're not 100% experts are trying to like compare what fits based on their body type because some people's bodies are going to fit the cups different than other people's bodies. So like mine fit bigger cup size than what she was trying to put me in because of the way my body is and because obviously I'm trans so my body's not going to be like a cisgender woman because my rib cage is not going to be the same as a cisgender woman. The shape's going to be a different instead of how like a cisgender woman's rib cage would be um, shaped so that's part of the reason why bras fit differently on me plus the scoliosis and kyphosis i have affects that as well which the kyphosis has slightly gotten better a little bit but it's still there so yeah but things play a role in it so yeah and that's kind of my frustrations with things as a trans woman but other than that I'm just happy I am a cup size bigger I don't have to worry anymore about not being the right size for my body I'm just going through the struggle of the rest of it filling in. So, other than that, I haven't had any other significant changes except noticing my hair is longer. All of this, how long it is. How long that is. Yeah. Um it is what it is, so yeah. And I do have an appointment with Dr. Goodman. I ended up getting a message from them and having to call them to set up an appointment. So my appointment is not tomorrow, but the next next week on Friday for a follow-up. He gave me the choice of when to come in, except it was either next Friday or September. I'm like, I don't want to wait clear until September to get in. To get this evaluated, to get revision set up and all that. We need to have it done as soon as possible so it doesn't continue to have or end up having issues. So we have to see what they say then. Because they want to reevaluate my body, what my goals and expectations are, and just go from there and I am a little nervous about it because I know part of it's my well I have Asperger's or autism and it's just because it's a surgery you just feel there's times where I don't feel calm about it and times where I just feel really nervous about it um, I just don't want to lose the sensitivity I've gained. It is a big concern, so, um, other than that, nothing else is really going on, except relationship-wise, it's just stronger than ever. <laughs> That's all I can say, with my girlfriend, so, yeah. And just how I feel about it. I never want to leave her ever, ever, ever. I 
ever, ever want to leave her. She's the one for me, and it's, I feel like she's a thousand percent the one, and she's the perfect one for me, so I'm just not going to mention anything else about that, but yeah. So, if you're wondering. So, um, yeah. Nothing else has been going on. One thing I get from the mind. <laughs> um, I've noticed once in a while I get a feeling around the clitoral area. It's those rare moments where it's kind of like a phantom penis, but not 100%. It's like slightly there, but not 100% there. So the best thing I can say is when you're having feelings like that, just touch. Because what's going on is the brain is sending signals to the body. It's one way, but when you physically touch, it resends the signal to the brain. No, it actually feels like this. And also healing vaginally, where the scar tissue is, next to the perineum and the vaginal entrance, it's getting better. The right side that was bigger is actually the smaller side now. The left side is still having issues going down. But some of the research I've done and noticed with my body, um, When you use a dilator, what happens is it's meant to widen and that doesn't really help with scar tissue. It can actually make scar tissue worse. But if you use a vibrator along with dilating with a dilator, what happens is the vibrator um, promotes blood flow to the area. When you have more blood flow, it actually helps to heal the area more. And when you have the blood flow and the stimulation from the vibrator, it actually can increase sensitivity as well. And I have noticed that with my body. So that's a tip I can give all of you out there. Is once you're able to use a vibrator, use it alongside dilating and it can help healing and gaining sensitivity and help healing scar tissue and tracing that blood flow to the area. Other than that, nothing else is going on so or has happened. So um, until my next video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And until my next video.